2 Kings chapter 1 After the death of Ahab, Moab rebelled against Israel. Ahaziah had fallen through the lattice in his upper chamber in Samaria and lay injured. So he sent messengers telling them, Go, inquire of Baal-zebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover from this injury. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Get up, go to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say to them, Is it because there is no god in Israel that you are going to inquire of Baal-zebub, the god of Ekron? Now therefore, thus says the Lord, You shall not leave the bed to which you have gone, but you shall surely die. So Elijah went. The messengers returned to the king, who said to them, Why have you returned? They answered him, There came a man to meet us, who said to us, Go back to the king who sent you, and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Is it because there is no God in Israel that you are sending to inquire of Baal-zebub, the god of Ekron? Therefore you shall not leave the bed to which you have gone, but shall surely die. He said to them, What sort of man was he who came to meet you and told you these things? They answered him, A hairy man with a leather belt around his waist. He said, It is Elijah the Tishbite. Then the king sent to him a captain of fifty with his fifty men. He went up to Elijah, who was sitting on the top of a hill, and said to him, O man of God, the king says, Come down. But Elijah answered the captain of fifty, If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty. Then fire came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. Again the king sent to him another captain of fifty with his fifty. He went up and said to him, O man of God, this is the king's order. Come down quickly. But Elijah answered them, If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty. Then the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. Again the king sent the captain of a third fifty with his fifty. So the third captain of fifty went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and entreated him. O man of God, please let my life and the life of these fifty servants of yours be precious in your sight. Look, fire came down from heaven and consumed the two former captains of fifty men with their fifties. But now let my life be precious in your sight. Then the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, Go down with him. Do not be afraid of him. So he set out and went down with him to the king. And said to him, Thus says the Lord, Because you have sent messengers to inquire of Baal-zebub, the god of Ekron, is it because there is no god in Israel to inquire of his word? Therefore you shall not leave the bed to which you have gone, but you shall surely die. So he died according to the word of the Lord that Elijah had spoken. His brother, Jehoram, succeeded him as king in the second year of King Jehoram, son of Jehoshaphat of Judah, because Ahaziah had no son. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaziah that he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? 2 Kings chapter 2 Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. 
the company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other, until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing. Yet, if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. He picked up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water, saying, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? When he had struck the water, the water was parted to the one side and to the other, and Elisha went over. When the company of prophets who were at Jericho saw him at a distance, they declared, The spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. They came to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. They said to him, See now, we have fifty strong men among your servants. Please let them go and seek your master. It may be that the Spirit of the Lord has caught him up and thrown him down on some mountain or into some valley. He responded, No, do not send them. But when they urged him until he was ashamed, he said, Send them. So they sent fifty men who searched for three days but did not find him. When they came back to him, he had remained at Jericho, he said to them, Did I not say to you, Do not go? Now the people of the city said to Elisha, The location of this city is good, as my Lord sees, but the water is bad, and the land is unfruitful. He said, Bring me a new bowl, and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went to the spring of water, and threw the salt into it, and said, Thus says the Lord, I have made this water wholesome. From now on neither death nor miscarriage shall come from it. So the water has been wholesome to this day, according to the word that Elisha spoke. He went up from there to Bethel, and while he was going up on the way, some small boys came out of the city and jeered at him, saying, Go away, bald head! Go away, bald head! When he turned around and saw them, he cursed them in the name of the Lord. Then two she-bears came out of the woods and mauled forty-two of the boys. From there he went on to Mount Carmel and then returned to Samaria. Second Kings chapter 3 In the eighteenth year of King Jehoshaphat of Judah, Jehoram son of Ahab became king over Israel in Samaria. He reigned twelve years. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, though not like his father and mother, for he removed the pillar of Baal that his father had made. Nevertheless, he clung to the sin of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he caused Israel to commit. He did not depart from it. Now King Mesha of Moab was a sheep breeder who used to deliver to the king of Israel 100,000 lambs and the wool of 100,000 rams. But when Ahab died, the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. 
So King Jehoram marched out of Samaria at that time and mustered all Israel. As he went, he sent word to King Jehoshaphat of Judah, The king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will you go with me to battle against Moab? He answered, I will. I am with you. My people are your people. My horses are your horses. Then he asked, By which way shall we march? Jehoram answered, By the way of the wilderness of Edom. So the king of Israel, the king of Judah, and the king of Edom set out. And when they had made a roundabout march of seven days, there was no water for the army or for the animals that were with them. Then the king of Israel said, Alas, the Lord has summoned us, three kings, only to be handed over to Moab. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there no prophet of the Lord here, through whom we may inquire of the Lord? Then one of the servants of the king of Israel answered, Elisha, son of Shaphat, who used to pour water on the hands of Elijah, is here. Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. Elisha said to the king of Israel, What have I to do with you? Go to your father's prophets or to your mother's. But the king of Israel said to him, No, it is the Lord who has summoned us, three kings, only to be handed over to Moab. Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts lives, whom I serve, were it not that I have regard for King Jehoshaphat of Judah, I would give you neither a look nor a glance. But get me a musician. And then, while the musician was playing, the power of the Lord came on him, and he said, Thus says the Lord, I will make this wadi full of pools. For thus says the Lord, You shall see neither wind nor rain, but the wadi shall be filled with water, so that you shall drink, you, your cattle, and your animals. This is only a trifle in the sight of the Lord, for he will also hand Moab over to you. You shall conquer every fortified city and every choice city. Every good tree you shall fail. All springs of water you shall stop up, and every good piece of land you shall ruin with stones. The next day, about the time of the morning offering, suddenly water began to flow from the direction of Edom, until the country was filled with water. When all the Moabites heard that the kings had come up to fight against them, all who were able to put on armor, from the youngest to the oldest, were called out and were drawn up at the frontier. When they rose early in the morning and the sun shone upon the water, the Moabites saw the water opposite them as red as blood. They said, This is blood. The kings must have fought together and killed one another. Now then, Moab, to the spoil. But when they came to the camp of Israel, the Israelites rose up and attacked the Moabites, who fled before them. As they entered Moab, they continued the attack. The cities they overturned, and on every good piece of land every one threw a stone, until it was covered. Every spring of water they stopped up, and every good tree they failed. Only at Kir Haraseth did the stone walls remain, until the slingers surrounded and attacked it. When the king of Moab saw that the battle was going against him, He took with him seven hundred swordsmen to break through, opposite the king of Edom, but they could not. Then he took his firstborn son, who was to succeed him, and offered him as a burnt offering on the wall. And great wrath came upon Israel, so they withdrew from him and returned to their own land. 2 Kings chapter 4 Now the wife of a member of the company of prophets cried to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord. But a creditor has come to take my two children as slaves. Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? She answered, Your servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. He said, Go outside, borrow vessels from all your neighbors, empty vessels, and not just a few. 
Then go in and shut the door behind you and your children and start pouring into all these vessels. When each is full, set it aside. So she left him and shut the door behind her and her children. They kept bringing vessels to her and she kept pouring. When the vessels were full, she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. But he said to her, There are no more. Then the oil stopped flowing. She came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debts, and you and your children can live on the rest. One day Elisha was passing through Shunem, where a wealthy woman lived, who urged him to have a meal. So whenever he passed that way, he would stop there for a meal. She said to her husband, Look, I am sure that this man who regularly passes our way is a holy man of God. Let us make a small roof chamber with walls, and put there for him a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp, so that he can stay there whenever he comes to us. One day, when he came there, he went up to the chamber and lay down there. He said to his servant, Gehazi, Call the Shunammite woman. When he had called her, she stood before him. He said to him, Say to her, Since you have taken all this trouble for us, what may be done for you? Would you have a word spoken on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I live among my own people. He said, What then may be done for her? Gehazi answered, Well, she has no son and her husband is old. He said, Call her. When he had called her, she stood at the door. He said, At this season, in due time, you shall embrace a son. She replied, No, my lord, O man of God, do not deceive your servant. The woman conceived and bore a son at that season, in due time, as Elisha had declared to her. When the child was older, he went out one day to his father among the reapers. He complained to his father, Oh, my head, my head. The father said to his servant, Carry him to his mother. He carried him and brought him to his mother. The child sat on her lap until noon, and he died. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, closed the door on him, and left. Then she called to her husband and said, Send me one of the servants and one of the donkeys, so that I may quickly go to the man of God and come back again. He said, Why go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. She said, It will be all right. Then she saddled the donkey and said to her servant, Urge the animal on. Do not hold back for me unless I tell you. So she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When the man of God saw her coming, he said to Gehazi, his servant, Look, there is the Shunammite woman. Run at once to meet her, and say to her, Are you all right? Is your husband all right? Is the child all right? She answered, It is all right. When she came to the man of God at the mountain, she caught hold of his feet. Gehazi approached to push her away. But the man of God said, Let her alone, for she is in bitter distress. The Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. Then she said, Did I ask my Lord for a son? Did I not say, Do not mislead me? He said to Gehazi, Gird up your loins and take my staff in your hand and go. If you meet anyone, give no greeting. And if anyone greets you, do not answer and lay my staff on the face of the child. Then the mother of the child said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave without you. So he rose up and followed her. Gehazi went on ahead and laid the staff on the face of the child. But there was no sound or sign of life. He came back to meet him and told him, The child has not awakened. When Elisha came into the house, he saw the child lying dead on his bed. So he went in and closed the door on the two of them and prayed to the Lord. Then he got up on the bed and lay upon the child, putting his mouth upon his mouth, his eyes upon his eyes, and his hands upon his hands. 
and while he lay bent over him, the flesh of the child became warm. He got down, walked once to and fro in the room, then got up again and bent over him. The child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. Elisha summoned Gehazi and said, Call the Shunammite woman. So he called her. When she came to him, he said, Take your son. She came and fell at his feet, bowing to the ground. Then she took her son and left. When Elisha returned to Gilgal, there was a famine in the land. As the company of prophets was sitting before him, he said to his servant, Put the large pot on and make some stew for the company of prophets. One of them went out into the field to gather herbs. He found a wild vine and gathered from it a lapful of wild gourds and came and cut them up into the pot of stew, not knowing what they were. They served some for the men to eat, but while they were eating the stew, they cried out, O man of God, there is death in the pot. They could not eat it. He said, Then bring some flour. He threw it into the pot and said, Serve the people and let them eat. And there was nothing harmful in the pot. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing food from the first fruits to the man of God, twenty loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, Give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, How can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, Give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, They shall eat and have some left. He said it before them. They ate and had some left according to the word of the Lord.